the 72-ton Jagdtiger or Hunting Tiger was the heaviest armored fighting vehicle used operationally by any nation in World War II. It was armed with a 12.8 cm Buck 44 main gun, which could outrange and defeat any armored fighting vehicle fielded by the Allied forces. Only around 80 were produced, and it saw a brief service from late 1944 until the end of the war. It was a fearsome vehicle, but most of them broke down during the way to the front. Only 20% were lost to enemy fire, and most were abandoned or destroyed by their crews. In reality, they were awful vehicles, too heavy and impractical to be useful. Otto Karius was a German tank commander during World War II. He fought on the Eastern Front in 1943 and 1944 and on the Western Front in 1945. Karius is considered a panzer ace. Some sources credited him with destroying more than 150 enemy tanks, although Karius in an interview claimed that he had around 100 kills or less. At the beginning of 1945, he was made commander of a Jagdtiger company of the 512 Heavy Anti-Tank Battalion, which by that time was engaged in fighting on the Western Front. His memoir, Tigers in the Mud, provides a rare combat history of the 10 Jagdtigers under his command. He stated, that the Jagdtigers were not utilized to their full potential due to several factors. Among them, that the Allied air supremacy made it difficult to move and the massive gun needed to be recalibrated from jarring after traveling off-road for even short distances. The vehicle was slow and transmissions broke down easily because the whole 72-ton vehicle needed to rotate to traverse the gun. The massive gun had to be locked down, otherwise mounting brackets would have worn too much for accurate firing. Also, an unfortunate crew member had to exit the vehicle in combat and unlock the gun before firing. Due to delays in production, the first German unit which was equipped with the new superweapon was the Schwere Panzerjäger Abteilung or Heavy Tank Destroyer Battalion 653. By the end of November of 1944, this unit had received 15 Jagdtigers. The unit saw sporadic action against the American forces in southern Germany, but the successes were minor and after just a few days the unit was disbanded. At around that time the unit had a listed strength of just six Jagdtigers in January of 1945. By the 9th of January the battalion was down to just two Jagdtigers in operational condition. Vehicles of the unit had a peak operational readiness of 38 out of 41 on the 15th of March 1945 and the lowest operational readiness one week later on the 22nd of March with just two Jagdtigers. And now let's see what the Jagdtigers achieved at the front in the last month of the war. On the 17th of January 1945, the first company of the Schwere Panzerjäger Abteilung 653 supported an infantry attack on a line of bunkers with two Jagdtigers. 
American forces and the German report on their actions showed that their accuracy of 1000 meter against the enemy bunker was excellent and after just two shots the armored cupola of the bunker was burning. On the 18th of January they attacked the bunkers again and destroyed one Sherman which engaged in a counterattack. On the 16th of March 1945, the second company of the battalion fought in the Hagenau Weisenburg area. One Sherman tank was knocked out during an enemy attack. A few days later, on the 22nd of March, the third company of the same unit fought around Ludwigshafen. The battalion claimed 25 enemy tanks destroyed, possibly the same action in which a group from the battalion claimed to have smashed an American column in Neustadt. One Jagdiger claimed 6 enemy tanks, another 3 and a third claimed 2. So the conclusion is the following. Altogether, approximately 32 US Sherman tanks were knocked out by the super heavy and expensive Jagdigers. This was a total waste of resources. Regular German tanks, assault guns and tank destroyers could have achieved the same result. Instead of the Jagdiger, the German factories could have built hundreds of tanks and assault guns. So basically the Jagdiger was a totally pointless vehicle. On the battlefield they failed to provide a return on the enormous investment worthy of their cost. It was simply not up to pair with the expectations that accompanied them, believing that larger heavier tanks with larger and heavier cannons would be able to stop the onslaught of Allied armor hitting Germany from all directions. Even worse, the resources it used actually worked against Germany's war objectives. Even yet, the Jagdiger continues to be a potent representation of the technological breakthroughs as well as the boundaries of the German industry during the war period. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.